So it could happen, it could happen quickly. And, you know, I think from an institutional point of view then, uh, I think we're going to see um, a, a serious move in. And what's interesting about that is the number of Bitcoin outstanding now is 19-ish million and the maximum will be 21 million. If institutions want to move in, that's going to be a lot of incremental demand for not that much more incremental supply. So the only one to the only way to uh, to then do that is to bid the price up if they really want to be a part of so, that. You know, I, we we tend to we tend to be five years in our uh, prediction. So the the five five to seven year forecast is in base case would be six hundred and fifty thousand, and then bull yeah. case would be about double that. This week. Kathy Wood's confidence in Bitcoin has reached an all-time high. In her most recent interview, she was questioned about her unwavering belief in Bitcoin and whether she could provide a price projection for the upcoming year. Kathy expressed that her conviction has never been stronger than it is right now, although she refrained from offering a specific price forecast for 2024. Nevertheless, Kathy did outline a broader forecast, spanning five to seven years, ranging from $650,000 to $1.3 million per BTC. Furthermore, Kathy shared her perspective on the entire cryptocurrency asset class, asserting that it is poised to surge from $1 trillion to a staggering $25 trillion, with Bitcoin accounting for over half of this growth. She identified three key factors driving this meteoric rise, the advent of Bitcoin ETFs, attracting institutional investors, regulatory clarity, facilitating investment by sophisticated individuals, the growing inclination of young people, including millennials and Generation Z to accumulate wealth through digital assets instead of traditional avenues like real estate, bonds, or stocks. For more insights, be sure to watch the entire video, where Kathy elaborates on why she remains enthusiastic about Bitcoin, reflecting on her initial purchase in 2015. Well, we're in the news for our Bitcoin ETF filing, and because it's with the SEC, we cannot say anything. Okay. But I, am re I really do believe that uh, the SEC is going to lose the grayscale case, and that's going to happen pretty soon. And that one of the ways that the SEC could respond is to turn around and uh, change the subject and, and uh, approve not just one Bitcoin ETF, but a lot of the ones that are on the docket right now. So it could happen. It could happen quickly. And, you know, I think from an institutional point of view, then, uh, I think we're going to see um, a, a serious move in. And what's interesting about that is the number of Bitcoin outstanding now is 19-ish million, and the maximum will be 21 million. If institutions want to move in, that's going to be a lot of incremental demand for not that much more incremental supply. So the only one to the only way to uh, to then do that is to bid the price up if they really want to be a part of so, that. And I'm, we're going to throw a two minute, couple of minutes or but your Bitcoin prediction at one point is a million dollars a coin. Are you still a big believer in Bitcoin? Yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Ever more so. First, global. Uh, private, no government oversight, digital, rules-based monetary system the world has ever known. That's a big idea. And we think the total crypto asset market in 2030 will be valued at roughly $25 trillion right now. Right now, it's a little over a trillion. Uh, and we think that Bitcoin is going to be more than half of that. Do you have a prediction for this year or next year, 2024? You know, I we, we tend to we tend to be five years in our uh, prediction. So the, the five, five to seven year forecast is in base case would be 650,000 and then bull yeah. case would be about double that. Yeah, I think, I, I think uh, institutions will be a big part of it. This is a new asset class, uh, very low correlations with any other asset class, except at extremes in uh, all markets, the correlations go to one. Uh, so yes, and I also I think uh, a Bitcoin ETF approval will help. I think uh, judicial, you know, judicial clarity, legislative clarity is all going to happen within the next uh, few years. This is an election year issue. I already know some young people 
who have switched their allegiance when when it seemed like Elizabeth Warren was going to lead the Democrats into the anti-crypto world. Uh, I know of some uh, young individuals whom I never thought would uh, change their allegiance, uh, changed, uh, shifted from uh, Democrats to Republicans. Now it's becoming a little more bipartisan in the legislative branch. And I think it is because it's becoming an election year issue. And so you can't be on the wrong side uh, of young people and win an election. Yeah, that is awesome. So th just two last questions. So Coinbase is still one of your, one of your largest holdings in the crypto space. Yes. You, yes. you believe in Coinbase still? Like Bitcoin? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. We think it's going to be the institutional on-ramp. It, it signed the deal with BlackRock. And I think that was that was a very big deal in terms of um, okay. you know, Larry Fink. Larry Fink is now all about Bitcoin. And so it's getting much more institutional focus. You will remember uh, uh, there was a time when Larry Fink said Bitcoin is environmentally uh, a menace. Uh, and, and I don't think he's talking about that anymore because actually Bitcoin is solving some environmental problems now that Exxon is putting Bitcoin mining machines into natural gas fields so that uh, instead of flaring the natural gas, it can be used to mint Bitcoin. So there and utility ecosystems are using it to uh, in their solar ecosystems, when the sun's, you know, created too much energy, it'll pour into Bitcoin mining and they can overbuild solar and wind. So, you know, this is the convergence of, of so uh, we have a very strong point of view about what's going to happen to interest rates. Uh, we think they're going to fall and surprisingly so, because we think the bigger risk out there is not inflation, it is deflation. You know, and you can look at, you can tell me, oh, these economic statistics are saying the economy is fine. You know, you take a look at some of these earnings reports and the headline will be, oh, they beat their revenue and earnings. But what happens if you look deep into it, the guidance has been falling for a long time and many companies are showing little to no nominal growth. Uh, so forget about inflation, nominal revenue growth is diminishing and by some measures, uh, real revenue growth has been negative in units terms for the last two quarters on a year over year basis. Well, I think uh, we've dropped inflation from 9% in June of 22 to 3%, a little over 3% headline CPI uh, um, in July of this year. So it's coming down and uh, money growth is negative on a year over year basis, uh, down more than 3%. It's been negative since the, the beginning of the year. Uh, and monetary policy operates on the economy with a lag. So we actually think there's going to be a harder landing uh, than most people think. And certainly when it comes to profit margins, now that all of these companies are agreeing to these huge wage bills, you know, uh, in a very unhealthy market, what tends to happen is the market narrows and a lot of people have been concerned that the Magnificent Seven have taken so much oxygen out of the room in terms of this uh, year's rally. Uh, what, what gratified us in the first six months of the year is despite not owning any of the Magnificent Seven, except for Tesla, uh, we outperformed even the Qs. Uh, and um, we owned a slight bit of Meta, but uh, a partial position. Uh, that tells us that the the bull market in innovation is broadening out. Uh, and that's a healthy development for innovation. As for the rest of the market, I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of um, disruption and dislocation in the traditional world order because of innovation. Uh, so I'm happy to see innovation is broadening out in terms of the market rewarding it. We'll see if that happens for the market as a whole, for the broad-based indices. We have the visionary Kathy Wood passionately sharing her unwavering faith and predictions regarding Bitcoin's future trajectory. Her comprehensive insights paint an optimistic picture for Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency landscape. It's a landscape brimming with opportunities and advancements, primarily propelled by institutional investments, regulatory clarity, and the rising interest of the new generation in digital assets.
We trust that the three key reasons she highlighted for this anticipated surge have offered you substantial food for thought and ignited a level of enthusiasm akin to Kathy's. As we venture deeper into this digital frontier, perspectives like hers serve as crucial compasses, guiding us toward potential prosperity. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.